and it's a small group here, so it's going to be an intimate conversation, which is always nice. That's the best. Um, welcome. Uh, and I know this feels like a group where we could, and we have it planned, we'll prepare a bit about, our, we've prepared a bit about RHE, some of the numbers, the report, and made it accessible, and what we'll do then after we present about it is break up and we have a jam board for everybody that is at home or virtual in their rooms wherever you are in the world so that that way people can contribute and we can read those and engage and then we'll engage with people here so we've got those two pieces so we'll just do that all right well I think we have to use these microphones and they said stay up here so, so we might do this uh, together we'll, yes, we'll do this as we do things. Um, <laughs> hi, <laughs> welcome. I'm Tom Nelson Laird, one of the editors of the Review of Higher Education, also a faculty member at Indiana University. And um, I'm very happy to be here with my partner um, in crime, my partner in crime, uh, Penny Pasque, and uh, I'll let you introduce yourself in a moment. Um, but, uh, and I'm, I'm happy to be talking about things that we've been doing um, that are aimed at sort of humanizing the experience of publication, the publication process, and what that might all mean. So, um. and my name is Penny Pasquay. My pronouns are she, hers, and in the spirit of Ash and our president and our executive director, um, five, almost five two, white woman. <laughs> Second generation in the state, Sicilian and Italian, so using my hands quite a bit as I talk. Uh, brown hair in all black. Yes, and uh, yeah, I can add I'm six one white male. Uh, he him pronouns. Um, I have my hands in the pocket in my pockets at the moment, but because I tend to use also use my hands, although I'm not Sicilian in my <laughs> in my background, so I don't know if it's the Scotch or the not the not the Scotch I had to drink but the scotch in my heritage. Um, but we will plow through this. Yes, and um, really we wanna start with a land acknowledgement and we have the team members, the leadership team and the editorial board members who are in the room so that you get a chance to know everyone. Um, and I know it's really kind of awkward because it feels like a small round space in here, but to be cognizant of everyone at home, making sure that people kind of come up here and introduce themselves or find a microphone to do that, to introduce yourselves. And uh, so let's start with the land acknowledgement. An introduction and then a land acknowledgement. We are upon the sacred ancestral land of the Nuwa, Southern Paiute, Washeshu, Washo, and Numa, Northern Paiute, Nuwa, Western Shoshone, Wallapi, Chemehueve, and people who live and thrive all around the state of Nevada. We also highlight and uplift all of Nevada's 27 sovereign tribal nations. Thank you. Stephanie, would you introduce yourself while you're at the microphone? Thank you. Okay. My name is Stephanie Wynn. I'm from Indiana University and one of the managing editors for RG. Yes. Thank you, Stephanie. And I, 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 before we get to the leadership, want to acknowledge, one, most of us are from places that are not here. Um, and the people that are online are from at least 12, maybe there are more people there now, other places. My guess is that all of us live on colonized lands. Um, and so uh, I think it's important for us to think about that um, no matter where we where we are sitting or standing yes. Thank you. yeah so our editorial team um, find a microphone find a microphone those that are here and introduce yourselves please, please starting with Monica hi everyone my name is Monica Quesada Barrera pronouns she her hers ella I am a second year at the Ohio State um, and I am one of the managing editors Hi everyone, I'm Heather Owen Kenyon from Boston College and I'm an associate editor. Hi everyone, she, her pronouns. My name is Sasanya Jones, I'm from Howard University and also associate editor. 
and I'm Tim Kane. I'm at the University of Georgia and he, him pronouns, and I'm associate editor. And just to acknowledge the other team members, Angela Boatman from Boston College is here and may join us in a few minutes. Um, and Milagros Castilla Montoya is at the University of Connecticut um, uh, and cannot join us uh, for the session at the moment. And Tania Mitchell from the University of Minnesota. Who's Those double their, booked. Who's double booked right mm -hmm. now, yes, um, is also uh, one of the associate editors. So for the full list of editorial board members and ASH bylaws, if you weren't aware, which we weren't until we became <laughs> editors not that long ago, it, ASH actually has an intentional rotation system so that it's not always the same people who are gatekeepers on the editorial board. And every three years, new people rotate in, new people rotate out. And this is actually a good thing so that uh, we work for change and so we'll talk about how to get involved in reviewing and all of that but we made it accessible already on that uh, on the board Monica um, so on the screen we have um, one of our RHE interns which was something um, new that we did this summer her name is Maria Clara Rego Tenorio de Albuquerque. It's a mouthful, but she is a student from um, Brazil, so she reached out to Dr. Penny Pasque during the summer, and she was interested in, interested in contributing to RHE, and through looking at articles and just tweeting about them, she, she did that, and so it was interesting because she did it through an international lens, and so she contributed to RHE for uh, about 60 hours of service um, and just posting, and so, in the future, she does uh, seek to pursue a higher a, a PhD here in the state, so keep an eye out for her. And credit to you, Monica, because Monica was her actual supervisor and mentor and all those good things, which was really wonderful. And we also are lucky to have the ASH intern, Tessa Smith, who's in the room. She was the, chosen nationally to be the ASH intern and helped with the, all the work that they were doing with the strategic planning and um, assessment that everyone, I hope, filled out for the association. So Tess is actually here as a listener because she's taken some of the report information, which was actually really great um, compared to some of the other areas of, of ASH in the sense of, hey, people feel pretty good about RHE, but I think as we're going to talk about some of the lore or some of the past ways in which RHE has operated in the field might still be living on and we do things quite differently as we will share and um, also we always strive to get better and how can we in the to use the words of Dr. Joy Gaston Gales actually work toward humanizing the publication process so we'll um, Joy actually talked about what does humanizing mean, I see you, and really engaging, and all of our work has, since we've come in here, we've actually worked on issues of ethics and trying to make sure that we're paying attention to the review process. Nobody needs to be a reviewer to on our team. Um, and in fact, we want to have people publish in RHE, and if it's not gonna be in RHE, then let's have you be published in a different journal. Take that great feedback and move it forward. Yeah. So um, just a little reminder for folks or a little introduction uh, to the review. Um, RHG is, is one of the leading research journals in higher education in the field um, and has been uh, for some time. Uh, it's read by scholars like us in the room and online, um, academic leaders, public policy makers, um, and the idea is that we're keeping our audiences um, informed about the most important things that we're investigating. Um, we advance uh, the study. Um, we are a typical sort of peer-reviewed empirical research journal that also does publish historical, theoretical, scholarly reviews and other essays and such. Um, we tend to almost or mostly be empirical articles, but we will we happily accept um, other ones. Uh, we're also quite selective. Um, we have about 16 articles published a year, and uh, we receive hundreds of submissions, which means there's a lot of good work that's submitted to our journal that 
isn't published in our pages. Um, and as Penny said, one of the things that we really think about is, well, we might be a first stop, right, for someone who's looking for publication. And so one of our roles as an editorial team is to help shape the field even by moving manuscripts along that won't be published in our pages, right? How do we give certain manu some manuscripts quality review so that those pieces can improve and move on to be published in other places? Um, we're the official journal of, of ASH and currently ASH's only research publication, um, which hopefully in the future might change. <laughs> um, uh, but we'll, we'll see how that plays out over the next couple of years. Um, and as Penny mentioned before, we follow the ASH bylaws on um, uh, participation, volunteering with the, with the association and its statement on diversity. Um, and we're happy that our current editorial board is very representative of the field in terms of methods, uh, identities, um, institutions that people work at. Uh, and other things, and, and we believe uh, and hope, <laughs> and I think we could document that it's changed uh, in the last few years. It's different than it has been in the past. So, as I mentioned, um, we were focused on issues of ethics when Tom and I took over and spent a lot of time um, with the whole team really trying to make change. And this year, if you were there at the address, humanizing is really the goal. And I appreciated the keynote in every sense of the word. And here is a quote that is up on the website about, I see you, I choose to see your humanity as a scholar, as a whole person. And so taking that ethics piece that we've been working on for a bit, and then actually allowing for the focus about what does it mean to actually do a humanizing letter, a humanizing review process, a humanizing process of rotation of editorial board members, really paying attention to the work, uh, that matters to us. And so this was a quote that I think sets the tone for the work that we want to do here. We take every submission absolutely seriously. We know that this matters in the field in terms of tenure and promotion or as a doc student trying to put in your first piece or whatever your situation as a senior scholar. I mean, all of this, this is important. If you're a faculty member, a practitioner faculty, if you are a policymaker and using, wanting to submit to the journal, every piece matters and it's not it's not an easy decision on our part, and it's always reviewed by more than one person. In fact, that's why the team approach. I really have come to learn a lot about journal work, and as an editor, it's a team approach, relying on everybody on the board, being an ad hoc reviewer, which we'll talk about how do you do that. Um, that is what we're striving for. And so if you're an author and a reader, research should make a difference in the world. What, is the, what are the concepts that we know already? And is, this is wonderful work, but how does it push the field further? What have we learned? What new original knowledge, whether it's a historical piece or whether it's empirical or scholarly, whatever that is, it should actually connect with and make change in the world. And so, really taking that approach to us about humanizing, thinking going in, I'd like it to be that manuscript. I'd like to accept it. So with that in mind, how can we help you? And I think we've talked about how a lot of people, we regularly get feedback from people, okay, I'm accepted, this is great, walk me through it. Or I was rejected, but that feedback was meaningful. And I didn't publish it there, but I published it elsewhere. Or, you know, engaging with us on that. That's really important to us. So making sure that this work is for the field. And we're not just a journal for if you're a different field or discipline and don't engage with the literature and beyond of the field of higher education, that this might not be the right place for you. Um, so those are kind of some things that yeah. we pay attention to. And we. Uh, we receive questions regularly about um, who's publishing in our pages, and those questions are often informed by assumptions that the review is for senior 
members of the field, um, for people who use certain kinds of methods or other things. And th this slide is to illustrate that actually um, we have a lot of <laughs> Uh, people from across the field, across levels. Um, most of the people that are publishing in the journal are researchers of, of some sort um, and faculty of some sort, but there's quite a bit of variability. And 20% of the folks in volume 45 were um, postdocs or grad students, um, and another 20% were assistant professors. So, you know, 40% of our authors were. Um, uh, were junior members of the field, and um, over 50%, 57% of them are not senior faculty members in the field. They hold other um, uh, titles and positions. So this is something that we, one, are glad about because we feel like this is a representation of the field, right? We have scholars in all of these places, and we need to hear from them. But it, um, it also, hopefully, is something that you all will carry with you as you leave, and as you hear conversations about the review, you can correct assumption, mis uh, assumptions that are out there, faulty assumptions that are out there. So humanizing is a team approach. I've mentioned that before. No manuscript just has one set of eyes. It's not just Tom or just me ever, ever reviewing manuscripts um, and not really taking it seriously. And so as we're doing revise and resubmits and sending it out to reviewers, this is important feedback that we do take into consideration. And it should, and that doesn't mean that everything, every reviewer ever said is correct or you want to take that feedback, you know, that's an option um, to say, oh, this was helpful, this was helpful, uh, not so much, and we're going to go a different way. Okay, explain that to us in the letter. Um, that's, that is a conversation as a team to figure out how could we help this work to make that difference. And uh, again, that team approach I think is really helpful whether you're here or elsewhere. Um, and then yeah and uh, i'll say a, a, yeah. a, a couple things about that as well just in in the approach that we're taking a part of the team right is so when you're doing something like this there's a desire for some efficiency because you're dealing with a lot of work and you you need to do that but oftentimes efficiency is not um conducive to humanizing and so i think we've been intentional as a team to think to separate out where where can we have efficiencies and, and not dehumanize? And then where are we going to spend time um, so that we're making sure that we are connecting with the humans that are doing the work? And um, having a team allows us to spread the workload out across more people so that we're not put in the position of having to move that way. Um, this is a, proje a, a projection, a, a model of how manuscripts th flow through our system. Um, and uh, I think what, I, what uh, you can look at this, uh, and what I'll do is just um, uh, highlight a couple of different pieces of this. First of all, we know that authors have processes before their manuscript gets to us, right? And, and as authors, hopefully you're involving your colleagues and other things. You're like, we're not getting the first draft of your manuscript. Hopefully you presented it. If you're presenting papers here, consider sending them to the Review of Higher Education. Uh, um, but, you know, so you've gotten feedback from people. You finalize your submission. It gets submitted online to us. Um, and our managing editors look at it. An editor looks at it. Um, and then uh, it may be passed on to an associate editor further. So it, it may see three editorial team members before it goes out for review. Um, and that hopefully happens relatively quickly. Uh, and what we, as Penny said, what we're looking for is how, how does this manuscript influence the field, right? How does it change something? How does it offer something new? How does it move conversations forward? How does it make something different? If we're going to publish 16 things, right, we want each of those to affect something. Um, 
And, and effects, right, is not used in the post positivist way no, no, no. only, right? No. Like, uh, I was in a, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. We, uh, how does it create movement? Yes. Right? Yes. How does it create different thinking? Um, this is where we are methodologically different, but <laughs> epistemologically similar. Um, that sounded really jargony, <laughs> but I'm also kind of cool. Um, but uh, so uh, then it goes through the regular sort of decision process. Um, we get reviewers, we get reviewer feedback, and associate editor. We also play the associate editor role sometimes. Um, letters get written, and it's in that letter writing. That's one of the big, big places, um, and this is an, an important place where we we need to thank our associate editors. Our associate editors draft first letters of response to um, authors, and they do an amazing job mm -hmm. of writing uh, these drafts um, with an eye toward providing useful, constructive, sometimes difficult feedback from one human or a group of humans to another group of humans. Um, in a way that that article will get better within the RHE system or move on and um, affect the field, influence the field, move the field through another journal. Uh, we get, then it gets to an editor to make a decision and then it, what happens after that depends on that first decision and it can loop back mm -hmm. and be resubmitted again if not rejected. Mm -hmm. And um, once you get into the revise and resubmit process with us, You'll be in touch with us. You'll get more uh, feedback uh, at a couple of places, and your chances of being published go way up. That's important to know because sometimes those revise and resubmit letters are tough to, you know, I've had them. I've had reject letters, right? We don't even talk about that in the field. And so sitting with them, with it, walking away, coming back, tackling it, figuring it out, letting us, the reviewers, know what you've done and not. That is the conversation. Be in conversation on the page about what you took up. And, uh, and knowing that stat, I think it's, it's helpful as somebody who's not always a stat person to know that your chances are pretty good. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. Very, they're very good. If you get a revise, revise and send it back because your chances of being published are very good. Um, no. You want me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so once accepted, then we have to get it into print. Um, and this is probably the most intensive exchange between us and the authors. Our managing editors, who do a phenomenal job in this arena, um, work with authors to get the manuscripts finalized, get them checked to make sure everything's been changed that needs to be changed, then work, work with a copy editor to make sure all the grammar and all the APA and all the other pieces are there and that we're not changing content very much at that point because <laughs> you've been accepted, you don't change your manuscript after that. Um, we then now, this wasn't the case when we took over at RHE, but now your uh, accepted manuscript will first go online um, more often than not uh, and it'll be available through uh, Project Muse uh, and then it'll get slotted into an issue um, and uh, moved to the print version, to a print version when that comes out. And that wasn't the case when we arrived and over the last couple of years, I was surprised how much labor that took to get this to happen, but if you have it online first when you're going up for review, that matters so many times. And so when we also, talk to reviewers, the full editorial board. We always talk with, the, this morning, we were talking with the editorial board saying, nobody needs to be a reviewer too. We need thoughtful, engaging feedback for people, again, published here or published elsewhere. So how are you going to receive the feedback? How do you share it in a way people can hear and hopefully do the best job? What we've done with the managing editors was we actually researched and have available on the ASH website, on our webpage, a couple of different people's perspectives about how do you do a good review that's helpful for the authors. And so pleasant, professional, open, organized, scientific, again, depends on 
what your paradigmatic approach is and being congruent with that paradigmatic approach or when you're not talking about why in particular. I think these are exciting things to be talking about in the field. But in addition to some of these places where this work is already online available to anyone, we were also thinking as a team, what are the ways to think about being a humanized reviewer and to humanize the review process? And so again, to take our president's words in a humanizing manner, you see the person in conversation. You're in conversation and dialogue with an author which you don't know, it's all masked. And we use that language intentionally as well, uh, that you're sharing positive feedback and this is great. It's okay to say, hey, this is really well done. And here are some things that you could be worked on. And again, RHE or elsewhere and respond in a way people can hear. And we are very busy and so if you're a reviewer know that author is waiting for that feedback and we also need to be very understanding of each other and different situations that have been happening um, you know and know that sometimes things come up so we ask reviewers to be in conversation with us if you can't do it if we need somebody else or if you can't be just a couple days late just let us know because we want to turn it around to the author and um, for Grad students, I know with RHE we've talked about it and there's, it's from uh, somebody who has a, a doctorate. And so if you are a grad student and you haven't yet reviewed, uh, no, we don't object to ask your faculty member, can I review with you? And then that faculty member is in a mentoring conversation with you and helping work with you. This is how, again, that team approach advisors are here, faculty advisors, we're all connected to each other, and no, we each have a very different way of reviewing, which is very important and why the team approach. Again, not one of us. Yeah, and for the graduate students in the room and online, uh, if you don't have a session like this, have, have, have a faculty member in your program, do a brown bag or some kind of session mm -hmm. about how they do reviews. Mm -hmm. Right? Give, a, give examples, Ma you know, mask things, but show them what it, what it looks like. Um, because we think the development of good reviewers is in part our responsibility as journal editors, but it's also a responsibility of the field. In order for the field to do its best, we need to be reviewing each other's work as well as we can. Mm -hmm. and, so, and that starts early on. So if you want to be a reviewer and you have a, a degree, we have this new piece this year, sign up. We want you to sign up. If you know somebody who just graduated, oh, they'd be a great reviewer. We don't want to just use the same old people that we know. Again, we're trying to really make sure that everybody is paired up reviewing the work that makes <laughs> sense. Uh, so please sign up. Yeah. Think about who should be on this list. We're putting this out there uh, and have uh, for the people at, um, who are online here at the con convention, we have the QR code on bookmarks so yeah. people can go ahead and sign up. And, and there's a, um, this is a place where we can mention, right, that we've received some questions about, well, why, why don't you have a, a open application process to the editorial board? Um, and actually, I think in the conversations we haven't um, fully talked this out, but that like we're, we want to know the people who are reviewing. We need our editorial board to be representative of the field. And an open application process doesn't necessarily produce that, right? But if we can get, if we can expand the pool of people who are reviewing for RHE and get to know a wide cross-section of reviewers and get to know how they do things and help them understand how to do good reviews, then among those people who are already reviewing for our journal, we can move and select editorial board members who are doing good reviews and represent the field in lots of different ways. And that's the process that we've, we've implemented and we feel very good about the, our success in putting together an editorial board that does phenomenal reviews for people, with people in mind, and represent the field very broadly. We actually have an intentional process for this. There's an, uh, where we 
have people do ad hoc reviews. We see how it goes. We actually um, run the numbers. So if we've invited to you, you to review three or four times and you're not on our board, like, hey, we've got to back off and wait until you get on our board. I mean, get tenure. And then um, also we are taking a look. Is everybody coming from one or two degree programs? That's not okay. Is everybody at one or two, dis all at R1s? That's not okay. Is everybody have a certain paradigmatic approach? No, again, not okay. Um, and trying to make sure that we have a cross section, again, with the rotation in mind, is very important to us. So we're paying attention to that, and we're always welcome we always welcome feedback because sometimes that's not always clear and I think that's also a part of why now we're doing a session like this yep. here and in the past there's also a session like this already up on uh, the website. Yep. Tim? So I'll just um, briefly say that we publish um, about eight book reviews a year, so it's a very small um, number. Uh, yeah, I used to be the book review editor for the History of Ed Quarterly. We'd publish eight to ten an issue. Um, and so what we can do, because we only publish so few, is be, one, very selective in what we do, but also give book reviewers space to really engage with the work. And a lot of journals of book review will be 750 words or 800 words. Ours are a couple thousand words. Um, and that allows people to really critique and engage with work, critique in the positive ways, not just be critical, um, and locate it within a larger conversation, which allows then book reviews to be a contribution in and of themselves. Um, most of the reviews that we get um, are people email me and ask, I'd like to review so-and-so's book. And I engage with them. I engage with the work that they've done already to make sure that they're an appropriate reviewer and aren't conflicted in some way. Um, and it's not uncommon for a book review to have two or three uh, revisions, or one or two revisions, two or three versions, which again is unusual for some journals. Um, so we do encourage you to think about uh, reviewing books for us, um, or to suggest books that you think should be reviewed through this email. Um, and we encourage it, we especially like when um, reviewers undertake the process with students. Right? And so a number of our book reviews are co-authored from a faculty member or other person in the field with a terminal degree and then a student that they're working with because it helps uh, an early career, developing career scholar um, engage with works in good ways in a mentoring relationship um, and start to publish in our field and become um, benefit from it those ways. Um, so again, if you um, would like to review, we're always looking for, for people to suggest themselves to us, and especially to suggest, I'd really like to engage with and review this book. We review empirical books, we review historical books. We don't review books of essays or, or things along those lines because our numbers are so, are so small. Um, and we're also moving into uh, now publishing joint book reviews, where we are able to have the space, you know, 3,000 words or so, to put two works in conversation with each other. So it's not just a standalone view, uh, review, but works talking to each other around a common issue. And how thank, cool, thanks how, so much, Tim. Yeah. They, see, how cool is this? This is why we do a team approach, right? I didn't know about book reviews in conversation with each other, and Tim has brought that to the team. I just, that is something new and pretty cool. Yeah, well, and, and I just want to emphasize, right, um, there are book reviews in some iterations are uh, an exercise for the author of the book review, and they are, end up being ignored by everyone else, unfortunately. Um, and as we came in and edit, as editors, we wanted to make sure that book reviews were a contribution to the field and um, were something that at least the authors of the books, <laughs> at minimum, uh, would want to pay attention to. Um, and that would inform, um, potentially, decisions about promotion and tenure, or at least go into packets about promotion and tenure, um, and other spaces, um, nominations for awards and other things. Um, and I, f I feel like uh, the substance of the book reviews is at that level now. Um, and. Um, actually are significant contributions. They're fun to read, um, and they don't take that long so, to read them, so uh, I highly recommend them to folks. Um, you can find us, email us at rhe at ash 
www.ws. Um, you can find us on Twitter for now. Um, mm -hmm. Having some conversations about Twitter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and some like, no, this is the space we need. And some, no, I'm, I'm out, right? Gotta like, get out of and here. this is why there's a whole board and a conversation that we've started already actually at the board meeting. And then I was chatting <laughs> with people after NPR, there was uh, somebody talking about, no, no, this is where I find my community. I can't, I'll be here till the lights go out. Um, you know, yeah. and so there's very, and then other people are peace out. So, yeah. uh, and, yeah. and, uh, we are the association's journal. We have a publisher too, so we have to end up with two websites, mm -hmm. um, and we try the, our hardest to make sure that they're entirely consistent. Um, if you notice an inconsistency, let us know very fast. Um, but you can access either of those websites, uh, as um, pointed out here. Um, and if you're interested in being a reviewer, this is the link, and sign up again mm -hmm. for that. We also have on the website. It will. Johns Hopkins does for us podcasts, take a listen. We always feature, it's a pretty new process. We've featured three different authors in the past, and that's been really cool. Um, when you take a look, and I'm very cognizant about Ash's mission and the ways in which we're reifying systems of oppression in the field to, again, the presidential speech this year, last year, the last few years, where are there ways of anti-blackness, uh, racism, uh, anti-queerness, um, you know, really embedded in the system. We talk about ability when we talk about just the things that Ash cares about and purports to do, where are there places where we need to make a change? And that's where the board looks very different than it did before, and we are committed to the work of the field and making sure we're working in collaboration with a full team and welcoming pieces that connect with that ASH mission yeah. of the association. And real quick before we go into our small group discussions, the, the, I want to let this group know um, and the folks online, we get and talk regularly about the fact that we're in an awkward context, right? We are an elite journal. That's one way of describing the kind of journal that we are. We select 16 things from hundreds to do. That's a place where lots of bad and oppressive things happened and have happened with our journal, with other journals, and um, in other contexts, right? This is where bad things can happen and do happen. Uh, and so um, I don't, I can't assure everybody, I'd like to, I, w I wish I could, I can't assure that we do everything right. Um, uh, but I can assure you we are cognizant of that. We talk about it. Multiple people are involved in thinking through how we do this better at every step. Um, and we think that that's, that's where you have to start um, to get better and to avoid um, the problems that get created. And so um, I don't want anybody to leave under the impression that we think we've figured this all out and that what we're doing isn't problematic in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, it is, it's challenging terrain, um, but it's the place that we are um, and we're trying mm -hmm. um, and to why see what Ash? we can do. Yeah. And you're, you mentioned the point earlier about Ash is trying to create, hopefully, more outlets for people's work. And we also are in conversation every week, actually, about the review and with associate editors every other week and with managing editors every week. So <laughs> yes. thank you. So for the people who are online, we have created, with the help of Stephanie, uh, a Jamboard online space for you to engage with each other. And you can use the chat function if it works. And the Jamboard hopefully will be a place for you to engage. And you can take a look at um, putting the materials up, um, up there and address it. And then what we'll do in the room is have a conversation in a small group, kind of collect as uh, maybe one circle or two circles or you know just come together. So, so those mm -hmm. online, and if you're in the room, if you want to do this too, you're welcome to. Uh, yeah. I can't multitask like that, but some people are able to. But uh, 
Here's the link for the Jamboard. You can go there. There are questions. There are a couple different pages. Um, mm -hmm. Please engage uh, and give us. We will take your ideas uh, and uh, try to run with them and see if we can't make some change. Uh, and in the room, we'll have a conversation about your thoughts, ideas, and questions uh, and see where we can go with those. Yes, we only get better in conversation, and we mean that. It's We mean it. So thank you for taking the time today. Appreciate yes. it. And uh, we'll see you at ASH. That's right. We're going to come down. Thank <laughs> you.